This is part two of the creating wall section and detailed drawings in Revit. Um, going to our wall section, I'll click to open it up. After you've got the, the wall section um, set up for you um, as best as you can using the modeled elements that are already in place, uh, it's now finally time to start filling in the rest of the detail you need to complete your drawing. If you're used to AutoCAD, uh, you're going to have a tendency to want to start just drawing everything in with line work, but you really want to try to avoid doing that because in Revit, um, even though you're going to be filling in the rest of this detail in 2D, you still want to keep it smart. Um, so you're going to use what are called detail components. Detail components are just little 2D drawings of all of the items, um, everything from CMU block to steel angles to even to um, bad insulation. And by keeping it in these uh, detail components, Revit still knows what these things are, um, and it still makes use of uh, this information when it comes time to keynote it or to tag it. So instead of drawing everything from scratch, you're really going to start to assemble this drawing um, kind of from parts and pieces um, from the OPN or the uh, Imperial Standard Library. So starting out, let's say um, I want to start laying out my brick in this section. So to find a detailed component for the brick, um, go to the Annotate tab, and then choose Component, and then Detail Component. From there, go to your Type Selector to find it if it's already loaded in your project, or click um, in your ribbon at the top, Load Family, to pull it from a, menu, from a library. Um, I know it's already loaded in, so I'll go to my brick, and I'll grab my standard brick detail component, bring it in, and drop it into place. From there, I can just start copying it up. But if it's if it's something that um, repeats a lot, um, there's actually a tool that makes this process go a lot faster. It's called a repeating detail component tool. So I'm going to um, delete to get rid of that. And if I go to the component pull down, and this time choose repeating detail component, you see I've, I've already got a, a repeating detail component set up for my brick. Now I can come in here and I can um, click to start placing it and drag it up and click to finish. And you can see that's, that's laid it in um, at all as one group which I can edit on the fly. The nice thing about this tool is um, you can actually customize and create a new repeating detail component for any detail component you have in your project. To do that, um, go to place a new one and before you place it, um, select Edit Type in the Properties window and duplicate to create a new style. Give it a name. In this case, I'll create a, a repeating detail component for the CMU. Click OK. And it is, in its um, parameters, you can see under uh, what detail it's using. Here, use the pull down menu to change it out um, to the detail component um, you want to start using for this. Uh, keep in mind, uh, in order to do this, the detail component has to first be loaded into the project in order to use it. So find the one you need and click on that. And before you click OK, uh, make sure you adjust its spacing. Um, for my brick, my spacing was, was set to this, so I need to make sure I change it out now. Um, and now you should be ready to place uh, the repeating detail component for your CMU. Just click and drag it out. Often um, in structural linked models, um, the engineers won't model in um, something small like a steel angle, but you may need to indicate that in section. So that would be a, a good time to use a, a detail component to indicate that. Um, if you don't have uh, a detail component that you need loaded in your project already, um, like I said earlier, you can find it um, by going to the place detail component and then choose load family. From there, um, go to your library, and if you're using an OPM project, um, our libraries are on the W drive, then Revit content, and then libraries. Um, I'm not on the network right now, so I have to go to a different place to find some libraries. When you get to the Revit libraries, um, for OPM you'll find uh, two different ones. There's the OPM standard library, and then there's the Revit imperial library. The 
OPN's standard library um, is a library that we've created um, and we've customized for OPN Office use um, the, um, that meet the OPN standards. The Revit Imperial library is actually um, the library of items that came just right out of the box from, from Revit. So when looking for stuff, uh, the best place to look is first the OPN standard library to see if we've created something custom for it. And if you don't find it there, then go to the Revit Imperial. And in the case of something like a steel angle or a CMU or brick, that's not going to be something that we would bother customizing. So um, that is probably going to be in the Imperial library. Click to open up uh, the library. And um, in this steel, you think that you would go down to structural. But actually, keep in mind that um, these are all the components in here. And so these are 3D components. Detail components are actually special, and so they're in their own folder called the Detail Components folder. So to find a, a, a 2D drawing of a steel angle, first go to Detail Components, and then you'll see that this folder is broken down by division. Then go to Metals, and then um, from there. Um, since it's just a 2D drawing, you'll typically have three versions of it. You'll have it drawn in section um, from a top view and from a side view. When you see the one you need, click open. And in this case, um, it opens up a type catalog, which you choose the specific size that you need. And then click OK to bring it in. Once you've loaded the component in, you may need to go to your type selector to find it. And now it's ready to place where you can just click anywhere and then rotate. So you can see that using this process, um, drawing a section or a detailed drawing in Revit is really more like building it and assembling it from a, a series of parts. Um, you'll do this uh, for virtually um, any detail, uh, including um, things like insulation and drywall board, um, and even down to um, weeping and mullion extrusions. If you already have uh, these details drawn in CAD, um, or f like from a website or a third party, um, check out my video on creating custom 2D detail components. So you can kind of create your own Revit diesel components out of uh, that information. So you don't have to um, draw it from scratch. As I mentioned, uh, even insulation um, can be brought in as a detail component, for example, rigid insulation. Um, but if, you're, if it's bad insulation, for example, if this was a metal stud wall that you needed to fill with bat, that actually has its own special tool. And you can find that um, under the annotate tab and then in the detail area called insulation. Clicking on that, um, before you get started in the option bar, you have the ability to change its width. So I'll change it out um, to 8 inches for this wall. And then um, just click to start it, drag it out, and click to place. And it works really, it, it's really essentially a repeating uh, detail component for you. And once it's placed, you can use the blue handle to, to drag it up and down. I'll delete that out of the way, though. So, um... Obviously, you want to create um, the details as, as much as possible out of these uh, detail component pieces, but sometimes it just doesn't make sense to, or you don't have a detail component to do that. Um, in areas where you need uh, basically large filled hatch regions, for example, a, a gravel fill under this concrete slab, you can use what are called filled regions to do that. Um, the filled region is located in the annotate tab, and then pull down region, and then choose filled region. From here, it brings you into an edit mode um, where you can use any of these line tools to draw out the filled region. And the borders of it, um, you can choose what line styles to, to use from. So in this case, I'll do a line 2. And then just click to draw out my filled region. You have to finish uh, creating a loop, so make sure you trim any corners. And when you're done, click um, OK. Um, then I'll just change this out for a gravel region. If I don't have one, um, you can always create your own custom 
filled regions by selecting it and then choose edit type and then duplicate to create a brand new type and give it a name and hit OK and then change the fill pattern here so click on the box to, to grab a new hatch pattern and then look for the one that you need Also, while you're building your wall section, it's important to toggle back and forth between a true line weight um, and a more schematic line weight um, that makes it easier to, to see your drawing. When I toggle to a heavy line weight, you'll notice um, some of these lines start to look a little funny. Um, when using filled regions, you can really um, take advantage of the line weights um, in the border of the filled region itself. Uh, what I mean by that is, is if I wanted a thicker, heavier line uh, around the outside of this wall, uh, foundation wall and this slab, um, since my filled region has already been drawn against that edge, I'll just build that line weight into the filled region itself by editing its boundary and selecting these line types and changing them to a, a fatter line so that they read a little bit better. So if it, I'll hit OK. And so you can see, you can really start to take advantage of the line weight of the filled region itself to, to get the look uh, you need in your drawing. I'll stretch that out a little bit. Also, um, I'll select the filled region and go back to edit its boundary. If you need to change um, line weights, you can always, um, like mid-line, you can always split it up by using the split tool into two different line styles. Um, and sh and that, that gives you the ability to change them out independently. If for whatever reason you needed to do that. There might be cases where you need to block something out completely. Let's say um, you need to notch out this CMU for whatever reason. Um, then there is another tool called the masking region. And the masking region is a lot like the filled region, only it's just white. Um, but really a better practice is to always use filled regions. Um, that way if, if it's, it's easier to edit later if, if you do need to change it to a hatch pattern. Um, just use a white filled region. So I'll grab the filled region tool again. I'll draw it using uh, line weight 2. And we'll just kind of notch it out here. So um, to get the proper line weight, this looks like a line weight 5 around the wall edge. So I'll select these two edges, change them to a 5. This um, can stay a line weight 2. This line, um, let's say I, want, I don't want to see that edge. I want it to blend away completely. So I can actually change that line weight to be uh, invisible so I don't see it at all and hit OK. Um, it's brought me into a sand fill region. So I'll pull down to see if I can find a solid white. If I, if I can't find one, I'll just create my own. So I'll hit Edit, Duplicate Type, just call it Solid White. And change uh, its pattern to be solid. Instead of a black color, I'm going to change its color to be white. And hit OK, and OK again. And that makes it go away completely. And one last thing uh, to keep in mind is um, with any detail items you have in your drawing, uh, any detail items are would be line work or detail components or filled or masking regions, you actually have the ability to change the order that they appear in front of or behind each other, just like AutoCAD. So say if I had uh, some insulation component in here um, I wanted to apply, I'll just click to bring that in. I'll go ahead and change these for a thicker type. I'm going to pull these down. Instead of a half inch, I'll change these out to be two inch types. You can see that when you have any detail item selected, um, in the ribbon you have this, this bring to front, bring to back um, ability. And you can see what it's doing is it's actually hiding it behind this um, filled region. So I can send that to back, and that changes the order that my 
um, components appear in. Actually, one last uh, thing is um, kind of the finishing touches on the drawing. Um, the, the line weights may not be exactly what you're looking for, and um, instead of drawing over the top of it with um, actual line work, you can actually um, grab individual edges and change the way their line weight appears by using the line work tool. And the line work tool um, is under the view tab, or excuse me, the modify tab, and then choose line work and click on that. And the way the line work tool works is before you start doing anything, uh, change it to be the line weight that you want. So um, I'll change it to, say, a detail line one. Um, I'll toggle on my line weights to see my true line weights. So I'll click the line work tool again, choose detail one. And now I can hover over any edge. And if I click the edge, it adjusts, it, it, it applies that um, line weight to that edge. I can change this out for any um, line weight I want. And when you first place uh, the, I can even uh, change it out an invisible line um, if I want to hide the line altogether. And when you first place uh, the line work tool, you'll notice these blue handles. You can stretch um, these handles if you want the entire line weight to be um, changed or just part of it.